and you would agree with me on this, Tim, you have a national championship standard. You're lead, yeah. or at least this year, college football playoff. Like that should be the goal with Caleb Williams' final year. You don't want to squander it. And so the the, the degree of difference between eleven and one and ten and two can be relatively small. It can be relatively modest. But like the difference between you know eighty five percent and ninety percent, or sixty five percent and seventy percent. That could be the difference between 10 and 2 and 11 and 1. And so I'm not seeing USC as having the kind of defense and getting the quality of coaching that's going to give that team that extra 3, 4, 5%, those, you know, those extra effort plays in crucial situations, such as what we saw in the Cotton Bowl. You know, USC just makes one of three or four plays on third and 10, fourth and 10. Late in that, in those last four minutes, they win the game. Is USC going to make those leverage plays? I remember the Utah game in October of last year. USC had a chances to win that game. Stop the two-point conversion. Stop a third down. Stop a fourth down. And you win the ball game. Couldn't make those plays. It's not so much sky is falling. It's are, it, is USC does, Has USC earned and merited enough trust that it's going to be able to get to that 11-1 level that it's yeah. going to be able to get to Pac-12 title game that it's going to be in that top four top five in early December it's small gradients it's not necessarily huge gradients right. or degrees you know USC yeah. has to be on top of these hot these high leverage small margin plays and we are seeing the kinds of things that would indicate no it's not going to happen when well, all the cards are on the table later in the season Matt, you're bringing up things from an entirely different front seven. Okay. I don't think that they score that last touchdown. And also the reason why that Utah, if we really want to break, break open the Utah game, the reason why that game went the way it did is because there was no depth and those guys were gassed at the end of the game. And that's why it was a great call. Great call for him to go for two and, and, and end the game because USC guys were exhausted on their heels. That's another issue, by the way, going up into Colorado, what we get into is that not only is it an early game and talk about lack of focus, it's going to be a circus. It's a big noon game. And on top of that, you got altitude to Colorado. But the difference between last year in Utah and this year in Colorado is we have a lot more depth on defense. I told somebody uh, this afternoon then asked, I just threw out 55-31. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking something like 56-24, uh, something, something like that. That's pretty much where I'd land. I already said earlier, 50, 52, 17 is what I see this game being. But I, but I just, you know, while I do think USC is going to win 56, 24, I'm not going to put a ton of money on USC uh, minus the points just because, well, we've talked about that and that the Alex Grinch defense elements. Like I'm, I'm not ready to trust a, a lot of money uh, to, to an Alex Grinch defense. But like, if you ask me what the, where the final score is going to land 56, 24. Um, you guys so you know, you guys the Eddie chat. Chase question. No, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead, Matt. Sorry. Did we oh, cover no, just that? The Eddie Chase did. question. I know you wanted to, like, I talked a, lot, a little bit about the Eddie Chase question by talking about Mason Cobb in particular, but I know that you wanted to talk about uh, Alex Grinch and the defense uh, a little bit more. So let's, let's uh, go into that. No, I just want to make sure we got. I'm sorry, I must have been out to lunch. I didn't know we actually addressed his super chat. So oh, yeah, just no, I sure. just did made a quick comment. So maybe you were in a position to elaborate more on it. No, I, I mean really just going going into is it scheme? Is it the players? I I I don't uh, scheme. I don't know yet. Because really, honestly, we haven't really seen a game yet where where the other team has the level of talent, right? That can they ring it up? And last year, it, we said, we all agreed that he didn't have his players. And for a big part, that is probably true. But now, now Grinch has the players. So when we do play Notre Dame, and then we do play uh, Utah, and we start playing Washington and Oregon, that's put up or shut up time. You know, we could talk about all this. He should have, there should be less. It really comes down to, did he win the game? Did the defense cost us the game? And when I'm going to decide, was is this defense the right defense? It's going to be in those games, not because we didn't cover the Vegas spread. It's going to be when we needed stops, when we needed to get them off the field, when we need to protect a 15 point lead with three minutes left in the cotton bowl, right? Those kind of moments. That's what's going to tell me is this, is this defense a failure 
or is this a defense going forward? Uh, because they do have the players now. Is, is it the best? Is it the best roster they'll have? Probably not. But is it a solid front seven? Absolutely. Do we have a you know a potential All American and Kalen Bullock? Absolutely, pulling center field. We saw that in this game. But I think don't we have to wait to say we have the players until they do it against Notre Dame? Oh, I, I think that I think that Bear Alexander has shown me who he is. I think Kalen Bullock over two years has told me showed me who he is. Um, and I like what I've seen out of Jamil Muhammad and and Solomon Bird. So those four guys, I am completely sold on. The linebackers have shined, uh, but they have been very inconsistent. And uh, that's where that's where the question mark is for me. But last year we had an issue. We had, basically had one guy pass rushing. Tui Tui Pelotu. He was like a one man rushing. But Solomon Bird was there, if you remember. He 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 was getting some sacks as well. He was shining, but he kind of faded. Um, we do have players, Matt. I mean, I've seen enough on, on, on key positions to know we do have the players. Do we have the right players in this scheme that will work? That's the big question. And we won't know that until we play Utah. But I will tell you, we did see Utah with Cam Rising a couple of times. And if you tell me we have the guys I just named, healthy and on the field, you know, then, then yeah, I feel a hell of a lot better about Utah. Uh, what I saw out of, of Washington so far this year, <laughs> that's a whole nother story. Will, will we have the defense to shut them down and we'll be able to go into Otson and, and slow down uh, Knicks. Uh, I, I, after seeing Dillingham call plays with that roster, I'm wondering how much of that Oregon success, because Oregon hasn't played anybody really yet either. So it, it's going to be interesting to see how, how good that offense is. Um, especially against a good pass rush. I want to see what Knicks and Pennix can do against our defensive line. That's going to be interesting for me. I think I think our defensive line will be the best they'll see all year. I'll make this comment and deliver this take from uh, you know 50,000 feet because I'm the guy that was sitting here taking calls and questions and comments about other games while this was all going on and trying to keep up with it just in, on, on my laptop in front of me without any context to what was going on except for seeing guys running up and down the field and a score. Um, Matt and I certainly looked at this game last week, and because of the San Jose State-Stanford and Nevada comparison, Stanford being the most legitimate one because of obvious reasons, playing in the same conference against the same competition. And we're starting to see that. And Stanford actually took Arizona to a one point game. Um, what we are generally considering to be an okay Arizona team, a fringe bowl team. And that USC just completely dismantled that Stanford team could have thrown up whatever score on the scoreboard that they wanted, had 49 points at half. And then considering all the injury issues that Matt outlined at Arizona State and the quarterback situation and everything, uh, and just the putrid uh, performance and offensive output from this team, Arizona State, against the likes of Fresno State and Oklahoma State, that I was looking at just an annihilation of possible epic proportions, taking the psychology out of it and just looking at the personnel mismatch and what USC, you know, this is different than Michigan playing Arizona state. And we would be a hundred percent sure what the outcome would be, but they would fold up the tents and they would just make sure they got to 45 and 45, seven, and that's it. But Shoot, we just saw the Miami Dolphins score 70 in an NFL game. We know that USC, on its best day against Arizona State, shoot, they could put up 70 points. Um, and so then to flip that that game on in the second half and see 27-21 and look at the numbers and just see the, the plays out of the corner of my eye, it was a bit shocking. And then to put in perspective, as Matt did, the expectations for USC playing is not like the front runner national championship favorite, but as a team that's one of eight or 10 across the country that has legitimate aspirations to play in the college football playoff, while that type of performance is not completely unheard of, it is extremely rare. You know, you take the Michigans and the Ohio State's they don't mess around with anybody the likes of Arizona State. You know, the Missouri game for Georgia last year, 
you have to take that into context in a couple of different ways. One being that Georgia had already, of course, as Matt said, won a national championship the year before, but that particular season had already laid down statement wins against Oregon and then some teams in the SEC before the Missouri game. This USC team hasn't to no fault of their own. They just haven't played anyone that's any good. Um, and so, and so that's, that's, that's part of it as well. Just not just that this was an alarming performance on the scoreboard, but there's nothing to counteract it in terms of, okay, well, they did this to Utah and Oregon this year. Now they've had a letdown against Arizona state. That boy, that is a really crucial point, Mark. Yeah. Like when we talk about having a letdown or a hangover or a look ahead, like when we talk about those kinds of games and those kinds of dynamics in a college football season, it generally applies to, all right, this team really had to spill the tank in a game at some point in the season. And then you have the letdown, right? Like you've exerted, you've pushed yourself, you've done something. And then then the effort level drops. Then the level of focus dissipates after you've achieved something. But this team was jogging through preseason level games and you had this kind of game. So that's a really instructive point for Mark. Like if USC was coming off, you know, a, a, a 38, 35 win at Washington state. And then you saw this game, boy, it's so much easier to just say, oh, this team was mentally drained. And let's, let's, let's go back to last season. Actually, USC played that very tough Oregon state game in week four, didn't play great against Arizona state in week five or Washington state in week six offense was well below uh, top gear in each of those games, but you could see, all right, that Oregon state game took a lot out of them. So then you, then you can really very easily rationalize the dip in offensive efficiency and overall sharpness in those next two games last season. And so this season you don't have that. And that adds an element of concern to all this. That, that is a very surgical and instructive point raised by Mark Rogers. Here's a good point. Again, I know we've been ripping on the defense a lot. But you I know, am I'm going to lie. be. Bottom line for me is I'm going to be fascinated with this entire Pac-12 race because I just oh, yeah. believe that there are seven good teams and there are five extremely good teams. And we saw Washington State take apart what I thought was one of the better teams in the conference this past weekend. I got to say, uh, for me, I'm rarely surprised by results. And I know Oregon State was on the road and they were only a three-point favorite. but um, you know, I expected them to play better defense and Washington state really hasn't won a game uh, under Jake Dicker to that degree against a really good top level PAC 12 team. They usually beat who they're supposed to beat. And then they lose to the big boys. Uh, they've pushed a few to the limit like Oregon last year, but usually don't win these games really don't ever win these games under Jake Dickert in a short tenure. So I thought that that was a really positive result, obviously for Washington state and really kind of changed my mind slightly about what might transpire uh, in the Pac-12. But it's it's uh, right now playing like the best conference in college football. Uh, folks, I've released my conference rankings, if you would care to look on the main channel. Uh, and it will be the best race, most likely, because it's the most, um, it's it's got the thickest layer of quality football teams at the top. You know, we guys, yeah. we only need about 40 more um, subscribers here at the USC Voice College Football to reach a big milestone, which is 4,000. So if you guys are out there and you guys have not subscribed to the show yet, if you guys do us a favor and go ahead and hit that subscribe button, get us to that, get us to that 4,000. So we've been trying to work on that for a couple of months now. And we really want to get there. Make sure you hit the like button. That lets be, us know that you are enjoying the content. Matt bringing in a guest star as well. He, I'm sure you're going to continue to bring more people from The Wire into into for future games right so if you like jack being on here and you want to see guests like that again hit that like button and then hit the bell notification because uh matt and i we're trying to narrow it down but uh we're gonna start doing some call-in shows um and then also maybe some reaction shows on sunday if we 
Like I know a lot of you guys probably want to vent on Sunday. So we're thinking about maybe uh, doing a call-in show and we're not, you know, unlike other shows, we're not going to clip you at, Hey, be quick. You only get 30 seconds. We'll have a, if you want to have a conversation about the Trojans, you want to call in, we'll, we'll talk to you. So, so call it on us. Um, we'll let you know, but the best way to know that we're going live is if you hit that bell notification, that way you will know if, uh, Matt and I say, oh, I think I think we need some therapy on the telephone. So we will open it up and we will all talk. So please take a minute, subscribe now. We really appreciate all you guys. Lots of options on a Monday night. Thank you all for being here and we hope to see you again soon.